the fascia of the epimasium, perimasium, and endomasium is continuous with and contributes to the formation of tendons. The lower motor neuron impulses then travel from the anterior gray horns of the spinal cord and then through the peripheral nerves. Here, the nerve impulses triggers the release of acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft of the neuromuscular junction. This causes a cascade of biochemical events. A nerve root is a bundle of motor and sensory nerve fibers arising from the ventral and dorsal parts of the spinal segments. When interviewing the patient, it is important to obtain specific details about the patient's pain. Characteristics such as type of pain, location, lesions such as disc prolapses, annular tears and ligament ruptures can be seen well. It is advisable that the procedures are performed on both sides to make a comparison with their physiological state. And place the other hand gently over the joint in order to feel for any abnormal manifestations. Begin by observing the lumbar curvature, noting the anteroposterior and lateral curves and the presence of increased or decreased lordosis. With the patient standing, ask them or show them how to perform flexion, extension, rotation. These are the patella and surrounding structures, the retinaculum, the tendons, and the bursi. Flexion, abduction, bring the patient's hip and knee to 90 degree flexion, then guide the hip joint through flexion, Look for the characteristic patterns of pain related to movement. In subacromial dysfunction or impingement, there will be a painful arc of movement between 60 to 120 degrees of abduction and relatively little discomfort at the start and at the end of the movement. Perform the safe movements as with the active test, but this time ensure that the patient's arm is well supported and relaxed. Now raise them by your sides there and push up and resist them. Adson's test, subclavian artery test. Test for presence of thoracic outlet syndrome. With the patient sitting, the examiner palpates the patient's radial pulse whilst abducting and extending the patient's arm. Thomas test. Test for contracture of the hip flexors or anterior ligamentous structures. Then flexes one of the patient's hips and knee fully. Trendelenburg's test. Test for hip integrity and regional muscular dysfunction. With the patient standing, the examiner instructs the patient. McMurray's test. Test for dysfunction of the medial meniscus. The examiner flexes the patient's knee fully then externally rotates the tibia on the femur and exerts a valgus force to the knee while it is slowly extended. Empty can test, supraspinatus test. Put the arm held in abduction at 90 degrees. Then the arm is lowered to 30 degrees and rotated internally. 